We weren't just fighting and killing these insidious enemies. There were some great humanitarian actions that my soldiers did throughout the surge. One came to my attention one night when we were conducting operations in Bakuba in Diala province. I was going out on a routine night patrol with a platoon from B Company 138 Infantry, headed by First Lieutenant Josh Wiles, who was the platoon leader. As I arrived to get the patrol brief from him, he told me, Sergeant Major, you are going to like this patrol tonight. We are going to go visit an Iraqi family that we've kind of adopted. Their daughter is a bilateral amputee from an IED that also killed her little brother. As we went out on patrol in the middle of the night in this dangerous part of Bakuba and entered into the courtyard of this family's house, I noticed this little girl of about 10 years old sitting in this adult-sized wheelchair. Shahada Baz was her name. She looked so tiny in this big chair. She was missing both of her legs. As we met her parents and other family members, we learned of the story of what happened. Shahad and her little brother Aziz were walking to school like any normal school children would. Anybody that knows anything about Iraq knows there was trash everywhere in cities like Bakuba at that time. The Abbas siblings happened to walk through some trash on their way to school and Aziz stepped on an improvised explosive device hidden in the trash that killed him instantly and caused Shahad to lose both of her legs. Wiles' platoon had responded to this event and had now taken a vested interest in not only still taking the fight to the enemy, but assisting this family who had suffered such a tragedy. As we continued to visit with her parents, I learned that the only thing Shahad wanted was the ability to walk to school again. She wanted legs, prosthetics. As we were talking and discussing our options to help them, the chaplain, Major Scott Rydell, who routinely came out and patrolled with me, approached me and said, Sergeant Major, let's do a prayer for Shahad and for her request to get her prosthetic legs. I replied, wait a minute, chaplain. I don't want to offend anybody here by conducting a Christian prayer in the backyard of a Muslim family. That's not what we're here to do. I don't want to offend this family or any others that may think that we are trying to impose Christian values on them. And he kept telling me in his South Carolina drawl, trust me, it'll be all right. Finally, I relented. So there we were, all of us grimy, sweaty, tired warfighters from my patrol in Wiles' platoon, carrying all this equipment and weapons, taking a knee around Shahad and grasping her wheelchair. I was still a little skeptical that we might offend the family. And as the chaplain began the prayer, I looked up at Shahad's parents and to my pleasant surprise, they were praying in their traditional Muslim way. It was such a beautiful sight seeing all of us praying together. That is when it hit me. For those 60 seconds it took the chaplain to say that prayer, the world was perfect. Christians were not killing Muslims and Muslims were not killing Christians. We were coming together as one to pray to God or Allah that they would present a miracle to this little girl so she could walk to school again. After the prayer was complete, I was extremely excited because it went over so well. I found out that Staff Sergeant Luis Falcone was the non-commissioned officer that had been the point man of adopting Shahad and her family in order to assist in getting her prosthetics. We sat around drinking chai tea with the family and seeing all of Shahad's other siblings running around and playing and Shahad having to sit in the wheelchair just watching with envy. I then grabbed Chaplain Rydell and said, look, sir, I don't care what it takes, but we are going to assist Staff Sergeant Falcone in any way in his quest to make Shahad's wish come true. We left that night, went right back out into the darkness and danger that is Bakuba and continued to patrol. Well, it was a few months later when the chaplain came into my office there at Fob Warhorse and he said with a big grin on his face, Sergeant Major, I got something to show you. And he showed me a picture of Staff Sergeant Falcone standing next to Shahad Abbas. She was on crutches, but she was wearing her new prosthetics and she had a huge smile on her face. That week, even though she had to use crutches, she walked to school again, accompanied by striker warriors from 4-2. This is what the American soldier is about. It's not just killing the enemy, but it's also taking care of the center of gravity of any combat operation, the population of the country we are operating in. 
And because of the Luis Falcones, Scott Rydells, and the thousands of other soldiers like them, the United States of America military is the number one partner of choice for global peace and security because of these kinds of humanitarian efforts. Recently, I received a picture of Shahad, now in her 20s, standing next to her husband at their wedding. A somewhat happy ending to a very tragic story.